on that. And yeah, okay. Uh, well, we, we really don't know, he could actually have a, a point with this as well in relation to cycling, but, uh, and it is straight away to cycling. And this is a 30 cyclist pileup. Uli, this is over to you, your hot topic, because of course, the Tour de France female version just ended. Um, expectedly, we knew who was going to win. Uh, you have a couple of minutes to tell us a little bit deeper about cycling and should we be believing all that we're seeing? Well, no, that hasn't changed. I think it's still not what we're seeing is uh, real, if you want. It's still manipulated. It's still doping. There might be more to doping in this. Uh, whether it's men or women so it makes it very unfortunate and i think the tough part here is that many people now say well it doesn't matter at the end they're all doping so it's fair and i think it's really important to understand that doping isn't doping that there's not a, a same level of doping that doping also depends on how much money a team has for the riders to get the right stuff and uh, cover it up and pay for cover up even maybe sometimes and then also that some riders um, react better to drugs, if you want, that are more effective than others. So, you know, now that we can see that younger riders are selected for how well they are reacting to drugs um, to be, become a top rider. So it's completely skewed. It doesn't make sense anymore at all to really look at it. This is last year, it's one thing, of course, this is last year at the, the Tour de France where this woman, uh, saying go on granddad and granny and she took down an entire uh, race that was a, 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 a spectator's fault and it's quite often spectator's fault or a driver's fault for example this crash that we showed uh in the women's sort of france uh it was it was a cyclist's fault but really on the hot topic we just gonna ask you one question because you know um, how easy is it to have a crash uh, it's it's fairly easy at the end of the day you could say you could turn around and say looking at how close they ride and how it feels to be there i've been there um it's quite a miracle that not more happens and i think the, the good thing is that as long as everybody's moving at a similar speed if they crash you know they, they crash at the same speed so it's not hitting a wall or something like that which makes it you get some scratches on the skin um and other than that mostly it goes well so what you saw in the women's tour you know the picture you showed there is a sensational but you find plenty of those as well in men's races so i think it was a bit unfair to say you know a bit chauvinistic to say oh look at the women they can't ride their bikes and there was many crashes there was even a, a lady run over by her team car we've seen that in men's cycling as well so i don't see I see any difference there um i think uh, you know there's there's a certain risk in being a pro cyclist it's obvious it's there uh, but pl playing football soccer is the same <laughs> you know <laughs> so that comes with sport it's not it's one of the risky sports and it comes with it and sometimes you could say they're very brittle people nowadays they're very thin and you know there's some drugs that lead to osteoporosis and something like that so when they crash they like really fall apart that's the part that we've seen and where you see the side effect of drugs that are not really in the conscious of people because if someone crashes and hits the road and then like, of course he's breaking something it doesn't have to be like that if it's a normal person, say, without drugs, maybe can sustain a crash better than an athlete that is like real thin as they are nowadays. One thing, of course, we, we I'll mention, but that's just what the drug you're referring to. One of the drugs you're referring to, of course, will be uh, from Ventolin, from the inhalers, from asthma medicines. They actually break down the um, bone density, so it actually affects that. So we see it in footballers as well, soccer players as well, and when they're using it, they actually start to pick up injuries, especially massive bone and tissue industries. Um, Andrew in Georgia, oh, uh, well, I have actually, a, a, we have a message or two messages in actually coming through uh, from uh, people who are watching. And Georgia, this is your hot topic. Live golf versus PGA Tour. You spoke about it already, so now you've got a couple of minutes to tell us why we should watch one and not the other or vice versa. Yeah, I, uh, you know, while, while you guys are talking, I've been flipping back and forth with the live event as well. And the uh, and first, let me say that my agent has not negotiated any sort of money with uh, the Saudi Arabian tour, but I have to say that I really do enjoy watching the Live Golf Tour. Um, maybe you can say that I'm compromised ethically, morally, etc. But uh, it's just so entertaining. And in the age of social media, with our attention spans growing shorter and shorter, uh, I just absolutely love watching it. There's no commercials. It's just shot after shot. They have a really good graphics team. 
um, that make their scoreboards on the side so you can follow the team aspect and the players. And it's a live scoreboard where the players are moving up and down. And uh, yeah, I if you want something to watch and you're really bored and you can happen to find the link on YouTube because sometimes it's hard to find, um, I, I recommend giving it a watch now and again because it really is much more entertaining. And these days when you watch a PGA Tour event, I feel like I'll watch for three hours and I'll, I'll see only five golfers and they'll just go back and forth between like these three or four golfers that they want you to see. And with Liv, it's they're flipping all over the course with that shotgun start. All the players are on the course at the same time. It's faster. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think most, most purists would hate me for this, but I really do enjoy watching Liv golf. And as more and more top quality players or, or mid quality players join the tour, it makes it even more entertaining. Well, from, from from the heart of what I would consider U.S. golf in Georgia, I mean, that's that's a huge statement. I will never um, get master's tickets now, now that I've said this. <laughs> my, my hope of getting master's tickets is gone. Well, I think it's better not to get master's tickets than to uh, get a, you know, a, a close shave in a Saudi consulate, so you're okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, oh, Mac, oh. over to you. Your hot topic for 30 seconds. I, I, I don't have a hot topic. It's just a rant. The, the same thing. Okay, <laughs> rant. We're going to put you on solo. Out. <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, we're going to see everyone's faces. There we go. So uh, I, my, my quick rant is lionesses. Nobody <laughs> ever calls the England team the lions. The whole point of us having to watch the football, women's football Euros to, to, to diversify and make it more, you know, uh, fair and all. So why, why we call them lionesses? They should just be lions, right? That's it. That's, that, um, there's, a, there's a point in that, Annie. There is a point in that. It's rubbish. I don't they should know. just I... be lions. No one calls the three lions the lions. Why are we calling them lionesses? I'm going to write a message to BBC Saying that There's just in, just in case any of our viewers watched, are not quite sure, Andy, Andy Mack is Scottish, so that might explain <laughs> that explain the right. Did 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 European champions, Andy? Away. European champions. Twitter is your 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 medium that you should use. Don't comment on something on there on Facebook. Use Twitter. Like <laughs> yeah. some hate against them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll retweet it. <laughs> yeah, Twitter is so reasonable and calm in their reaction. Oh yeah. And they will reply to you. They will reply to you. Yeah. <laughs> you and, and you know what the best thing is on Twitter, if you say something, it just goes away. Like you don't have to worry about it again. So it's okay. You're okay. <laughs> no one will bring up what you wrote 13 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and the best thing is when you get really, really drunk, then start to tweet. And then it really works out well. Like, you know, so yeah, sober is not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sober is not interesting. Why should you be abused by Liverpool fans for like hours on end? sober it's just oh. just just right. the typos are getting crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. right